Ouch! Oh, before I started this video, oh, I'll just hit my. <laughs> Ouch! Ow, 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 ow. You know, I'll just allow you to watch this. <laughs> I've hurt myself when I was about to record. Ouch! And by the way, <laughs> my name is Ishmael, and if you're watching me for the first time, welcome to today's video. I guess the enemy does not want me to make this video. Uh, but this is one video where uh, I get excited when I make, okay, because I get to speak out one of the things that are always inside my heart, you know, because this is what's happening here. Uh, I haven't even made a proper titling of this video, but I'm going to put it out there and I believe it's eventually going to help somebody a lot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So listen, when it comes to love kingdom ordained spouses, kingdom marriages. Listen, uh, at times you shouldn't really blame yourself, especially when you're at the point where it's not working out or you're at a point where maybe it always fails eventually or you're at a point where you feel like you, you, you're unable to find somebody who is most probably more suitable for you or you're most comfortable with. Listen, there are a lot of things that are involved and remember that it's not only up to you to do it. You're not supposed to do it alone. A lot of things play a role. That's why you can also or eventually even get to a point where you'll be like, you know what? This is just a matter of God's grace. It's a matter of where you most probably might have to leave most of the things unto God. But I think this is a part where most people, they have a misconception. They get to a point where when they leave it up unto God, they relax to that extent where even things that you were supposed to do, they are not doing them. They still say, God, 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 and some things, they need you. Uh, and what am I talking about? For example, as a man, most probably, a woman can be interested in me. But if I don't approach her, there is also a chance that I, I might not get her. Because she also be at a stage where she be like, no, I can't approach a man. No, you get what I'm saying? That's how some women have been raised, or majority that they are not supposed to make the first move. A man is supposed to chase. So in that case, we can be hindered because not because we are not interested in one another, we and not because we are not suitable, but nobody wants to make the first move first. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And now let's head to the, the next part. Then there's a part where like you both, uh, maybe you are in a relationship, you, you know that so bad you want to make it work. You are aiming for marriage. You also at the point where you can do almost whatever it takes godly just for you to work out. Even when you have conflicts, you will try harder for you guys to resolve. But listen, as much as you can be praying, um, try hard, you know all the advices about marriages. Listen, remember that it's not always up to you. Your partner also have to contribute. If your partner it's a dull way for the enemy to access your marriage or your kingdom marriage or your supposedly like a uh, relationship that is aiming Christian relationship. That's still a problem. If you're, for example, your man is unable to say no to women, that is still a problem when he gets tempted. No matter what you do, if he does not want to cooperate, it's a problem. No amount of prayer that can make him to totally automatically say no except an amount of prayer that can be have enough grace to make him be able to resist to have the ability to say no because some temptations they are extreme to an extent where you realize that oh my gosh i don't even know how i said yes you feel like yo even saying no is a huge challenge so at the end of the day when such a person does that it's not your fault and remember that does not mean that you are not meant to be together. That does not mean that person is not suitable for you. That does not mean that it's just your thoughts and all. Listen, when God Almighty called Jonah, do you remember? Jonah did not want to obey, did not want to go to preach in Nineveh. He refused the calling until God Almighty forced him. So let's look at it like this. That, did that mean God had not called Jonah of course not. God, Jonah had been called. Does that mean when that person does not love you back or decide to cheat on you or decide to leave you, that, that, does that mean 
that person was not chosen by God to be with you or to be the most suitable person for you. That does not mean the case. That person was suitable. God knew that was right, but the person along the way just decided to make their own choice. Like I always like saying, the greatest gift that God has given mankind is free will. Nothing God makes us to do by force. That's why Jonah was even at a point where you could say no. God had just to do something to make him say yes. But if Jonah further wanted to say no, even when he was in the belly of a fish, he would have said no and probably died there. So God, in some other ways, he was scaring Jonah so that Jonah can end up doing what he wants him to do. Pro most probably because he was the only person who could do, do it exactly how God wanted. God had already anointed him to do it exactly or accordingly. Hallelujah. So, when it comes to love also, note this. People are selfish, you must note that, okay? Whenever somebody says yes or agree to be with you, you must note that that person most probably saw something from you. Most likely is the case. They saw what they can benefit. If it's a man, for example, most commonly some men, he just maybe looked at a woman lustfully. That's why it's also sometimes a danger when women don't dress properly. Uh, not that because I'm one of the people who are against it. I'm not, but uh, I get to realize on why some men can approach some women. Find that their intentions is because they saw those thighs. They saw the picture themselves inside that woman's pants. And you find that when he gets in there, now it's done. The curiosity is gone. Oh, okay. Now I know how she tastes. Now it's done. It's gone. And you don't understand. But I'm not saying you shouldn't dress according to how you feel. But all in all, I'm trying to say, you must note down that when somebody comes, what did they see? What did you post on social media for somebody to inbox you? Hence, you have to follow the necessary things to make, to filter out someone who's there to use you and run away uh, from someone who just there to be with you and stay with you. Like, man, if I can flesh out my cash, show up my cars, show up how loaded I am financially, of course, it's going to attract some women. And the moment, if in case you find that I end up running out of cash as a man, there are women who obvious majority are going to run or that lady is going to run. Why? Because what brought it to me is not me as a person, not my personality, but my finances. She pictured that oh, this guy can actually buy me this. This guy can always give me cash. I'm broke at this moment. So you see, it's as simple as that. And then there is a part where now finally, both of you are in the same mindset. You both know the reason, the, the motive or the purpose of um, a marriage. That even if I get to a point where I, 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 I no longer feel butterflies and all these things, I must, we must just find a way to resolve and make this work. We must just find many ways in which we can solve, talk, and all those things. And you find that one of you might be in that mindset, but the other person is still immature. That's what also ruins people. That's why some people end up separating because they are not in the same mindset. The other one is still childish. The other one just keeps quiet. The other person does not want to even resolve. They don't even know how to. But if two people who are in the same mindset, who understand marriage, who understand how to resolve to talk, marriages were going to last for a lifetime. People were not going to separate. Even when they fight, they will simply, easily or quickly resolve. So that's why the challenge is. That's what you must understand. That's why at times, it's not because you didn't pray enough. It's not because you have bad luck, but also the other person must cooperate. But if both of you can really be those matured Christians filled with the Holy Spirit, always ready to obey when God speaks. When he's talking to both of you, you won't have pride. I look at myself with my best friend. He's a godly man to an extent where I get to a point where I even know how to take advantage of him. Not in a negative way, but in a good way. I know that my best friend, even if sometimes he can act hard, just because he's a Christian, he cannot afford to act this cruel. He fears God to that extent. So I know that our things we always going to work out well because he won't do something as cruel. But unfortunately, we have people who don't fear God. They can be as cruel as they, as they come. You know what I'm saying? They can do something even that a Christian 
can't confidently do without feeling guilt or something. So that's when where it becomes difficult. That's why you find some even preachers, some pastors, you find that he's beating up his wife, but he's a pastor, he's going to the church, he's going to preach. So with such a man, you cannot work out anything because they don't even fear God, they don't have a conscience. But our prayer is to get to people who are godly, who are fears the Lord, who are matured enough to meet. If they can meet and now they try marriage, it's obviously going to work. It won't fail. The devil may try to, but he won't prevail over them. And allow me to leave this video here. If you want to get hold of me, check the description of the video below. May God Almighty direct you to your ordained spouse. And if you watch to this very end of the video, just comment below that God will direct me to my ordained spouse. Bye.